but I don't mind. That's what they called uh, Bill Gates in those days. That's one of the things, when I think about Bill Gates, I don't think about his money, because anybody can earn money. But what sticks in my head is the fact that he knew who he was and is, what he wanted out of life, that he wasn't crazy, even his own mom thought he was cuckoo. So sometimes we love our moms the very most. Or sometimes there is something, some conviction that will define who you are, that will press into that purpose of your being, that only you and your creator understand. When you're that convicted, that's how you're going to know what your purpose is in life. That there is a certain conviction that will come upon you that no man can watch you win no matter what they say. So whenever I think about doing something and know, and people start telling me, that's why I don't tell people that I'm doing something until I get it done. But I have so matured in my spirituality and in my, my power of intention that I can say what I want to do, what I'm working on to anybody, and nobody can touch me. So when they bring some things to me now, it's going to drift up. But if you're just growing into that position where you want to own yourself, you don't start off by telling them the naysayers. Have you found that a whole lot of people over on this corner always know it can't be done? There are too many people over there. Remember, the cats cannot be where the cans are. Don't invite me because I ain't coming. Now, everybody's path is different. This is very important. A woman empowered to achieve the impossible is a woman of distinction that understands that their path is different from every other person. So don't look around. When I look at what other people are doing, I'm looking for a source of inspiration, but not to change who I am. Because you are the original. If you change who you are, you will never be happy. You will never find what it is that you think you're living. But when you live authentically, whatever else you do will prosper. Am I making sense? So own yourself and make no qualms about it. I don't make excuses for who I am. It's very important. If you do that, everything else will fall in place. Be a compassionate person and honorable. Now, for the daughters in this room, the most important, like I can see that beautiful daughter over there, she's brushing her mom's hair. You see, for me, that's honor. A woman of honor and a child of honor or a daughter of honor is the one who would, who would honor their mom. You I, I have it like that in that regard. I have a great relationship with my daughters because that's the best gift you can give them. A woman of intention and a spiritual woman knows that whatever you put out to your kids will bring it back to you. I had my eight-year-old destiny. I'm sweating like, uh, you know what? And I said, Dee, when I was leaving this morning, my husband, I said, could you have me put this necklace on my back? And she put it on, and I said, Dee, thank you so much. I love you. She said, no problem. That's what daughters are for. You, you follow me? You just, you just, that's what I'm saying. I mean, don't pay me to any money about the daughters. We love our children, don't we? We love our daughters, right? Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. Now, you can be over there. We don't need you over here. This is what we need you here. Because what would you do without those daughters? Right? The best gift you can be, give them is the gift of authenticity of who you are. Be the best role model for them. And the Bible says, honor your mother and your father. Not because they're the greatest, because I hear people on TV say, well, I don't talk to my parents because they did that. They, they did, the Bible didn't give a condition with which you must honor your parents. It is just the beautiful thing to do. Honor them. Unconditionally. I'm almost done. <laughs> this is very dear to my heart, and I'll get out of your way. And uh, before I do, I have a gift to give away, right? This issue of empathy and apathy. But to be honest with you, putting things in proper perspective, as far as I know in my own little knowledge and research, America is the only country that I know for a fact that is so empathetic and so compassionate towards others. It doesn't matter that people say America has this issue. Thank you, I got another sister back there. Thank you. Go ahead, that's the truth. This is about America now, so you can clap. Right, clap. This is what you say, right? No, please, I'm sweating. Don't give me something. But I think, I think I'm in the pool of water or something. Is there water in here or something? I just, okay. One of the things every human being, especially women, remember we, we've even said time and again that when you train up a child, especially if it's a female child, a woman, that is like training up a whole nation, the whole country. So it's very important the way we treat one another. And we tend to be more emotional than our male counterpart. Is that, is that true? Doesn't that mean that as, as sisters, we must be compassionate and empathetic towards one another? You see, because I talked about it in the book, How to Succeed Against All All, the importance of supporting others even when you see no reason for it. When somebody needs support, 
if you're living authentically and you're living spiritually, meaning when you say you're living spiritually, you're trying to emulate the way Jesus was and still is. Because Jesus was not the one who condemned people. It was only, it's only the law that condemned. And he didn't say, I'm going to forgive you and support you if you are right or not, not being in the wrong place of things. So when we talk about empathy and validation and supporting one another, it doesn't call for judgment because there's no one in here that can say that I've lived a clean sleep life, that's late life. Everybody has something they've done. Even if you took a napkin that you didn't have as permission to use, that's wrong in the eyes of law, right? Now, here's my point. What every sister is asking for is understanding, compassion, and love, and support. Even if you don't understand why they did it, the, 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 the sister that is asking for your support didn't ask you to decide whether what they did was right or wrong. You know how you call some people? They want to decide whether or not they should even support you or help you, depending on what they think about what just happened. Am I making sense? Please don't do it. You support people because it's the right thing to do. If you want to talk to them about it, that's much way later. There's some people, the minute you call them, they want to kind of admonish you and tell them before that, well, by the way, wear this. Thank you, sis. I appreciate it so much. You follow me? So that is really the thing that is very dear to my heart. Because I know when I was coming up, certain people didn't want to do anything, but you know what they do? As soon as they see you come up, they, they want to remind you, remember me then? Excuse me. But still, you have to be merciful and compassionate towards one another. Every one of you shouldn't live here with the same group of women you came in with without going over to somebody else. Get to know them, if nothing else. Because I find that very common in the Catholic churches, that most of the time there is no lot of intimacy. This is the most intimate I've seen. Can you believe that? And I think it's important. I don't think because Jesus was a compassionate man, he brought people together. So let's embrace one another. It doesn't mean, I, I'm not saying take them home. <laughs> I, I didn't talk honestly, so don't be afraid. Just say hello to people. Maybe somebody never said hello to them. Smile at somebody. Don't frown. I don't care what your reasons are. Don't frown. It will make you get older sooner than you want to. Did you know that? The more frowning you get, the worse it is. So here is it. And, um, <laughs> you live a reflective life, a very thoughtful life, a life of non-complacency, because complacency will bring about mediocrity, and when mediocrity comes, you begin to call yourself all these kind of hard names. Did you follow me? Embrace change. Change is good for you. I love change. I love challenges. I can be me without any of those. Don't be afraid. You know why right now a lot of sisters are scared about the recession? There's plenty in the God's kingdom. Abundance is now. If you believe in who you are, just ask God, show me the way. This is not a time to flap your pa, pa, pa. I don't have money. There's so much money in the world. It's time for change. Believe in yourself. Every one of you has what it takes. So I guess my time is up, but this is what I'm going to do.